everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make what I'm calling a gatefold mantel pleaser. I'm really pleased with this one and I think it's turned out so, so pretty. So this is the front and I've done all this gorgeous decoration. Now this is part of my Mother's Day series still, so this is project number four, but because I don't need any more Mother's Day cards, this one is gonna be a birthday card, but you can definitely, this will make a beautiful Mother's Day card, which is why I've done it. So you can see there, to a special friend, and then you slide this off. It's also using supplies from the latest Papercraft Society kit as well. And then you open it up, and this drops down, and then this drops down again, and you imagine that it will hang over the edge of the mantle or the side table, wherever you choose, or the person chooses to have this displayed. But I think it's so, so lovely. And the idea for this one came from my 6x6 drop-down card. So I was looking back again, I, <laughs> I get inspired by some of my older tutorials and I think of other ways to kind of, you know, just evolve them a little bit more. And I looked at that one, and it's such a large 6x6 piece that drops down. So with that one, it's like that, but it's a 6x6 card. And then I just thought, if you just score again through the middle, so if you do want to do a six by six version, check out the one up here, and you just score with the six by six, by the six by six piece here, just score at three, right through the middle. And then you'll have that fold down like so. But let me just bring this up, you can see all that detail. It's so, so pretty. Now, you do have to make sure whatever's hanging down, I talk you all through this, but it has to stay within this section. But you could also, swap this piece for acetate so you could almost cut this off completely cut a piece of acetate that is well this is two and a half so you could do three by whatever the width is when I go through all that and just score at half an inch stick it underneath and have it all acetate so that whatever you stick on top really does look like it's completely floating I was thinking about that as I started to put it all together and I thought that would actually be you know a nice way to you know just make it look even more like it's floating I think it would uh, look really really cool extended the sides there as well so you've got room for all the bulk when it all folds up on itself and again it all fits nicely into that belly band I think it's gorgeous really nice and you've got room on the back to stamp and write your message I just need to add my white piece of cardstock there for when I need to give it to a friend but I think it's I do I'm really really pleased with this one so I hope you enjoy the tutorial and let me show you how to make it okay so this is the kit it comes in a box and you've got ink cubes these ones here actually are the ones that you get and I've used the papers I've used the square topper and the to my to a special friend topper to go on top and then I've used the two papers so I've used like a purple card that's in the um, kit and this one here and then the flowers and everything I've die cut but these little sprigs hang on a minute let me just show you they're the flowers because you get two different ones you get those ones you get these ones so I've used these three but you've got those three as well you can mix them up it's the leaves I absolutely love those leaves so I've used those and then you can see all my paper I keep all the scraps in the kit just so I know and I'll be using these flat back pearls to fill the centers of the other ones that I'll probably need so that's the current kit but then I pulled out these I really like this one here you just see that little sprig and I've done it in the holographic which is the same as what I've used as the frame and it's from the first of the card making um, of the Papercraft Society kits and it's this one here so if you've got the first one I've just gone and grabbed that one there and there's some great flowers in this one as well that you could always use because you've got these ones here so and there's leaves there as well so you can mix them all in together so that would all look really nice and then for the larger kind of vine I guess or like I just wanted something that was going to hang quite long so I had a look through all my kind of leaves I've got a category for leaves <laughs> and this one was really nice and it's the bright roses sprigs and twigs and I've used this one here because I'm going to cut pieces of it off so I've just cut a few I've distressed a couple as well and I'll talk you through the rest of that but that's kind of what I've got ready and then for my lovely center sentiment the happy birthday lots of you have this it's one of my favourite stamp sets. I've had it, I'm going to say, I reckon a couple of years at least. And it's still available, so I'll link it if I can find it. I just love the three different happy birthdays that you get. So I've gone for this decorative, you know, swirly one, because I think it works quite well with this style card. And that's everything. So I'm just going to just pop all that to one side. And then we'll do some scoring. 
So you're going to need to come into frame there. So this is a piece of 10 and a quarter by 12. And along the 10 and a quarter side, you want to score it two and a half and two and five eighths. So right next to each other. And this is just going to give us a little spine so that we can handle the bulk that you're going to be folding inside because you're going to be having all this de decoration and then this base piece or this the draped piece is going to fold up inside. Then you want to score again at seven and five eighths of an inch and seven and three quarters so again right next to each other and that will leave you a two and a half flap here and here so that we can fold it all in. Then if you rotate along the 12 inch side you want to score at two and a half and five. Okay so it's nice and easy scoring. Next you want to fold and burnish all of the score lines. Just be careful when you do these ones here where they're right next to each other. So just do maybe kind of lay it down first with your finger and then go in and burnish it just so you can keep it straight because they may want to kind of do their own thing and then just work that other one. So you want to have it so that you've got the one where you've got the two and a half and the five inch score line. Have that towards you and we're going to cut. Basically you'll have your two score lines that are close together. The inner one, so the one that's you know right next to these two rectangles. You want to cut up that one past this first score line and up to here and then across here. So we're going to remove the two squares and this section here. So in fact I'm going to use my longer scissors and just really neatly up there and then along here and just remove any score line so it's nice and neat like so. So you should have this here. You don't want you want to be removing that piece all the way down. Okay, so just do the same on this side again, removing all the score lines. Okay, so that's now what you should have. And on the sides here, you'll have a very, very small little spine. And that will allow us to kind of hold that bulk that's going to be in there. Next, you want to do all your mats and layers. So I'm just going to bring in all of my pieces. Because it's very, very straightforward. The timely bit is, you know, sticking and arranging all the flowers and everything. And then we'll do that belly band last of all. So I've got this piece here, which is going to go in the middle. And I've framed it with my favourite holographic card there. So the holographic card stock, let me just grab my ruler. I'm pretty good with the measurements, but I've got a few to tell you here. So this is four and three quarters by six and three quarters. Yep. And then the, the purple piece on top will be four and a half by six and a half. So you want one of each size. Although if you want to have it so that you write your message on the back, then you'll want those same sizes again. But the purple piece you'll want to be white, for example, just so you can stamp and write your message. So I can add that at a later date, but that's what you'll also need. Then you'll want four pieces of mirrored card or whatever it is that you're using. That's two and a quarter by six and three quarters. And then this pattern piece is two by six and a half. And you want four of each side size and they're going to go two in there and then two on the front there and then I've got these pieces and they're going to go here and I just think they look quite nice just to kind of decorate these panels so they're both the same size so you want two pieces again of the mirrored that's two and a quarter by four and three quarters and then the pattern paper is two by four and a half okay so I'm going to stick those all in place and then this one here, I am not sure whether I still want to do a very, very thin. I cut it using a, a stitch square die, but I think I'm going to come in even more. Just a little bit closer here on my trimmer and along here and actually use some mirrored cardstock again. But we'll play around with that in a moment. For the moment, for now, I'm going to go and get this all stuck down. down and you would have seen me 
just fussy cut around that and then I stuck it with some foam on the mirrored cardstock and then I fussy cut around that just to give it a frame. So it looks like it's die cut and I just think that looks nice. And then once I start to add a few flowers around it and some leaves, that's gonna make quite a nice feature. And already you can see it's gonna look really, really nice. So now we just need to stick all the flowers down. So I'll just show you, in the kit you get this shaping, flower shaping tool. So I've just got my foam mat here, I've just die cut one of them and you just turn it over and you just roll it over all of the petals or the leaf, whatever it is that you're doing, like so, and it will all curl up. And then if you flip it over and just roll it in the middle, you'll get a really nice dimensional flower. And I've just done that with everything. And then you can start to layer them up, kind of offset them so they overlap each other a little bit like so, and it will start to build up. So some of them I've done just the large and the medium. That one's got the large, medium, and two smalls. That's just the medium and the small. And then you can do the smalls on top of each other like I've done there. So, you know, play around with them and build up your flowers. I'm gonna um, finish making these whilst I put it all together. And then for the leaves, I have just used the, I think I just dropped one on the floor, but I've got one of the inks from an older collection, this one here, and I just had it, you just put it on the, you know, your mat, whatever it is you're using. Use your, you know, a blending brush and then just lay it down and just, just go in and kind of just kiss the edges. In fact, I need to just dress this one up a little bit so I just go in not much and just literally just a little bit and it just helps just helps it stand out a little bit really just giving it a little it almost like gives it its own shadow so it adds a little bit of depth to the project so you don't need to add much at all. I mean, if you want to completely cover them, you might not have any green cardstock, so you can die cut this in white and then use your inks to create, you know, your green leaves and so on. So but it just, yeah, just gives a nice effect. And um, yeah, I like doing it. I tend to, all, I always, yeah, I think I don't, I very rarely just use the flowers as they are, or the leaves. I do tend to add some color, but you can see now there where I've just added that to the ends. And then I will just finish this one here. But that's exactly what I've done with the flowers as well. Though I use the pink that comes in the kit but against the pink, because this is my own cardstock, I think it was too similar because you can't really see it. I mean, you can even go in with the cube itself and just brush it over, but it dries quite light. So you can go quite heavy with it, but like that, and that will dry um, much, much lighter. That one there, I've done it. You can just see a little bit, and I may add a little bit onto these. So yeah, you can either do it like this, you know, this is a real like kind of lazy, quick way to do it, or you can, you know, lay it down onto the mat and then, oh, got that all over my nail. Luckily it all washes off. These are hybrid inks, so they're great with your alcohol markers and with your watercolors. So if you want to stamp with them, you know, they're not going to bleed. So I've gone in a bit darker with that one there on the end, but it will still work. So I'm just going to finish this off. All done so now we just want to focus on the the bottom rectangle this one's just going to stay flat on the mantle or the sideboard wherever the card will be displayed now whatever you stick down you have to make sure so I'll just bring this whatever we stick in here okay has to when it all folds up you don't want it sticking out the top okay so they will be they're still going to hang down lovely but you don't need it obviously as long as this so I'm going to take that quite far down but I'm going to kind of really make it quite full around the top side here Ooh. you know and I'll add those in as well but you need to get your first one laid down so then you can see exactly the the kind of the length that you've got but um that's there so actually I just need to take cut a little bit off what I'm going to do is snip them there and then just pop a little bit of glue underneath because I'm going to be layering up around these. Now also you don't want to go, you need to make sure that nothing goes out over the sides because you need to fold these in. Okay, so you do need to keep everything I now know, I can't go any longer further down than that, and I don't want to go out the sides there. But I now can start building it up. You don't want to build up too much because it will obviously bulk out, but these are just lying quite flat so I can, you know, really create a nice, kind of little, and some of these can kind of go underneath that one there. I always like to just, I don't know, just start 
placing everything. So I'm going to have that flower there. And then I'll probably have another flower here. And you can also have, that one's fallen off there. You can have a flower stuck down on that one there. But I want to build this up a little bit more behind so you don't see so much of the purple there. And um, you know this will all be hidden under there. So I don't want to use hot glue because again the hot glue when it dries it will leave dimension and it's really hard. So you're better off using a, you know, just a normal liquid glue just so that stays quite flat. So I'm just going to start laying this all down, sticking it all down. I've got these leaves here as well which are going to come up you know, or under the flowers, and I'm also going to have some flowers around the happy birthday. So I'm going to pop it on high speed and I'll be back when it's all done. Done, but you can imagine now when that's hanging off the side how pretty is that all gonna look it's so nice and it all folds up and that all folds in and it does hold that bulk perfectly so I'm really pleased with this one I think it looks so so pretty so now you just need to finish it with your belly band so I have this here which was the scrap piece because we cut this to ten and a quarter so you would have had this piece left over so you just want to, as I do all the belly bands, just sit it behind and wrap it around. You don't need to score, but wrap it around just so it's it's tight enough that it's going to hold you know, itself on there and not slide off. But you don't want it to be so tight that the person's really going to struggle. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue just down one side. Hold that down like so. And then I have that. And I'm just going to, I'm actually just going to add some glue just in the middle there. You don't need to go crazy really and then just sit that one down just so it's in the middle. I mean if you want to you know add more pattern to the belly band I've done that before with belly bands you know there's lots of ways to decorate them but I think this is just the night you know the right amount you've got that pink I think that breaks up the pattern and the, helps the flowers really stand out. Okay so there's the outside you can see all that detail on that belly band it looks so pretty and I love like I said these little sprigs here I think they look so nice and then just slide that off open this up, this piece falls down and then that will hang over the side of the mantle and again I think it's stunning to bring that up closer just so you can see and what I might also do there's always room for more sparkle I think this is the one I need to throw that one away it just adds a really lovely sparkle to you know whatever it is you put it on so I'm actually just going to go around and quickly cover these Just bring that out now. Can you see all that sparkle on the flowers? It really does give a nice effect. And I've also just done it on the belly band there as well. So there you have it, a beautiful gatefold drape card or gatefold mantle pleaser. <laughs> I don't know, but either way, I think it's absolutely stunning. I can see this with a big number in the middle or for a wedding card. Yeah, I think it's going to look great. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. Check all the links below. As always, I will share what I've used there. And I'll be back again very soon with another tutorial. Mm -hmm.
Bye.